Thanks for watching. And today I want to tell you about an interesting fact about functions, which is actually an exercise that I assign to my students. I hope they liked it as well. Namely, suppose you have a continuous function from r to r such that the value of f at 0 is the value of f at 2. So think almost a parabola. This is 0, this is 2. And we know that f of 2 is the same thing as f of 0. So kind of they are two apart and they have the same value. What I want to show is something even better, namely you can find x and y that are one apart such that the value of f at x is the value of f at y. This is f of x and this is f of y. So in other words, you can cut out a segment of length 1 from this. And you will see repeating this argument, we'll be able to cut out a segment of length 1 half and 1 quarter and 1 eighth, etc., etc., until we reach maybe a single point. And in other words, such kind of functions have this triangular structure in some sense. You have a segment of length 2, 1, 1 half, 1 quarter, etc., etc. And this turns out it shows a simple application of the intermediate value theorem. So all that we want to do, we want to define a helper function. And the helper function is none other than f of x plus 1 minus f of x. And what we want, and again, it's continuous as a difference of two continuous functions. And what we want to do, we want to apply the IVT to g. And for this, we just need two specific values, which are g of 0 and g of 1. So if you want g is continuous at uh, on 0, 1. And then now look at g of 0, which is f of 1 minus f of 0. And g of 1. Well, yes, it is f of 2 minus f of 1. But remember, f of 2 is f of 0. So this is the same thing as f of 0 minus f of 1. So this g function, or helper function, actually has nice properties. On the one hand, at 0, it's f of 1 minus f of 0. But at 1, it has the opposite sign. So it literally it changes signs. Because if this is non-negative, so if this thing is positive, then the other value has to be negative. Or the other way around. If this is negative, then the other value has to be positive, because it's just the opposite of that. So what can we tell about g? Well, it's positive at 0, negative at 1. So by the intermediate value theorem, it says it has to cross the x-axis somewhere. So by IVT, okay, uh, there is some, some c in the interval 0, 1, such that g of c equals 0. But what does that tell us in terms of our function? It tells us f of c plus 1 minus f of c equals 0. I mean, this is our c, if you wish. Do you see what I mean? So then f of c plus 1 minus f of c equals 0. I'm glad you're not getting bored with my jokes, hopefully. Okay, and then f of c plus 1 equals f of c. Well, and how does that solve our problem? Well, remember we want to show that f of a value is f of some other value. But now it's easy, so let x be c. x equals c and y is c plus 1, then the difference is 1. So x minus y in absolute value, that is absolute value of minus 1, which is 1. But f of x equals f of y equals f of y. 
And not only, uh, not only can we say that, but we can also say so x and y are in the interval 0, comma 2. They're actually between um, 0 and 2, yeah. between those values where f of 0 equals f of 2 and 0 and 2. And notice how nice this is. So it's a very quick application of the IVT. So very cute problem. Uh, actually, I, I didn't remember it until like uh, a student asked me about it. I was like, oh, I forgot I assigned this. I should make a YouTube video on this. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.